welcome to another edition of the Leaders Room. The Leaders Room is an initiative of the ECLIF Leadership and Governance Center. In this space, we invite leaders from all walks of the life to talk to us about their values, their life purpose, and the mindset that keeps them moving forward when they confront resistance and challenges. My name is Michael Koster, and I'll be your host today. Joining us is Budi Suhardi. Budi used to be a high-flying pilot for a major international airline. But one day in 1999, all of that changed as he, his wife, and his children watched a television show. He'll talk to you about what that change was, and we'll ask him questions about what were the values behind the change that it, that incident brought to his life, and we'll explore with him the challenges that he faced and how he overcame them. Booty, welcome to the Leaders Room. Thank you, Michael. Booty, would you start by just giving us, in, in a couple of minutes, a brief synopsis of what happened on that, I don't want to say fateful night, maybe the, that transformational night in 1999. Yes, on the evening, uh, it was supposed to be our special evening because my wife and I and family, the whole family actually, we are uh, having a special dinner to remember our good times and we were living in Korea for nine years. I brought in with me all the special meals from Korea. And on the evening as well, we were planning to travel around the world for our holiday trips, 33 days, been a, based on the job that I'm having, I'm entitled to travel first class. But while we were having our dinner, we saw a television program broadcasting about the condition of people who are living in the refugee camps, mm -hmm. which is much enduring some sort of uh, 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 survival kind of living. They have nothing, they have no certainties, and they have no proper food, no pro proper place, and very miserable. And that re those refugees were where, Booty? Uh, the refugees uh, were the East Timor refugees. Okay. Uh, right after the separation between East Timor and West Timor. Okay. Living in the, uh, the borders between Indonesia and uh, East Timor. Okay, so you're watching the show on TV. Yes, watching the show on TV. Be careful to watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> Can change your life. So that condition uh, uh, got me in, and my wife as well, that um, this is not fair. I'm having so-called, I may have put it like, very comfortable kind of living, everything nice, secure, safe and clean, while other people, they don't have everything. And plus, uncertainties about what's the next, uh, what, what's the next day will be for them to eat. So derived from there, my wife and I uh, uh, thinking about it, and uh, we are very much affected by the, the scenery that we have. So at 11 o'clock, after prayers, my wife and I prayed together, and 11 o'clock we decided, okay, Let's uh, postpone our holiday and visit the refugees at the camps instead. Then what's happened? So, so let me make sure I have this straight. You and your wife, and I'm assuming your kids, mm -hmm. decided to postpone mm -hmm. an around-the-world trip mm -hmm. that was going to be for 30 plus days. Yes. And you would be, would have been traveling mm -hmm. in first class. All that. Mm -hmm. You set that aside mm -hmm. because you saw something that you said was not right. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so what are the value for, in Eclipse language, mm -hmm. what happened for you sounds like a mismatch between what you hold mm -hmm. to be true and what you value and what you see as something non-negotiable mm -hmm. and what you were experiencing in your environment, seeing that show on TV. And you decided, I needed to do something about that. What were the values behind that? What motivated you? postpone that trip? Yeah, we have been enduring good life and uh, it's something normal, yes. uh, right. living in a comfortable you know, environment is, is normal to us. But uh, those people who we saw, it, it's, it's not, not fair. They don't even have the minimums. So, you know, we just want to share what we are blessed with. It's not ours. Everything is from uh, for, it's, uh, God's blessing that we are having. So. What we are giving is actually uh, our time, it's from God. What we have, wealth, this and that, is also His blessing. So we are sharing what we are blessed with. It's nothing but us. Okay. Mm. So what, 
what initially turned out to be just simply going over and taking 500, you know, not pounds, grams or something over there, turned out to be something a lot more and a <laughs> lot longer. Tell us about that. Yes, we, we were planning to bring uh, 500 kilograms Kilogram. max, yeah. kilogram, kilogram. Uh, especially uh, items or things that are useful for the children. Right. The innocent, miserable children, you know, because they have to enjoy this kind of living. So, uh, yes, we decided, okay, 500 kilograms, okay. Then at the end of the day, actually, from Singapore alone, we managed to collect 987 kilograms, almost one ton. And then we, uh, when we brought over to Jakarta, with the money we committed to spend, $10,000 US, and with money that friends was asking, I uh, want to participate, and uh, 57,000 US. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lot of money, so go to Jakarta. And at Jakarta, we did our shopping, and from uh, almost one ton, become eight tons plus. Wow. <laughs> then it comes to headache, how to bring them across. Then, uh, well, it's, uh, well, the trip itself from Singapore to Jakarta is quite dramatic. And from Jakarta to even to the, to the, uh, to the West Timor itself right. is full of miracles. And then in, in West Timor itself, actually, we did our shopping again. And we shop, shop, shop. And at the end of the day, from original plan of 500 kilograms, we end up more than 40 tons. 40 tons. <laughs> wow. Now, you were just originally, though, planning to go to deliver mm -hmm. those goods mm -hmm. and then come home. Yes. Uh, but I don't think it ended up working that way for you, <laughs> did it? Yes. Uh, we, we did it a uh, few times. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, except that we are getting smarter because we, we will buy things locally there instead of all the way from Singapore and from Jakarta again. And then we did a few trips, you know, and then after a few trips, uh, is it a useful trip? Yes. Is it helping people? Yes. But giving food to the people, it's lasting maybe a week at the most. Or, and then giving clothing to people who uh, does not have, who don't have water, in mm -hmm. a few weeks will become wrecks. You give utensil, this and that, you know, it's basically, uh, it will not not last very long. No, so the there's no nothing significant about how to change the condition. Right. So from there, actually, my wife and I uh, think again, and then how can we do something which is long lasting, more significant, and give more impact mm -hmm. to maybe less individuals but more meaningful. Right. So that's why we uh, decided. Okay, let's look after the children. How? Then we decided to rent a house, fill up with four very miserable children because the children we, I mean, uh, have, we are having were full of past and wounds these and that, uh, you don't want to know about it. Right. And then uh, from four children, from six, eight, and then ten, when then ten children, then uh, two children were taken away by other people. So the children's distance relative because of the rumors that people are spreading that my family and I are uh, able to live in Singapore because we were, or we are selling babies, so yeah. it's very sad. But yeah. anyway, more children coming, coming, and, and come at a point whereby the rented house is not enough. Mm. So we need to right have our own place, right out of space. Yeah. So what did you do then? <laughs> then we uh, try to think, hey, we have to build our own place, and how, where? Then we, we remembered that back then, 1992, which is eight years before, Actually, we bought a land in Timor without seeing it, without looking at it, without stepping our foot on it. Okay. Why? Because at that time, uh, we were having uh, uh, relatives asking our help for his or her friends who are coming with the family to Jakarta or who wants to uh, get the daughter food fixed because of the accident that they're having at home. Then their food is accidentally went into the boiling uh, so uh, palm sugar making. So the food is like uh, duck feet, you know, they join up together. Oh. And 10 year old girl. So very sad. So they, want, they uh, have money but limited to reduce their burden. Uh, our friend reduced, can they stay at your place? And we have, uh, well, we have a house, we have, why not stay at our house? 
So they stay at our house. And uh, when we brought them to the hospital, actually the money is not enough for the operation. <laughs> uh, they brought seven million. The operation cost uh, 13 million. Uh, my wife is like, okay, top up. So we top up. Uh, again, nothing. Uh, what we have is actually blessings anyway. So we mm -hmm. share what we are blessed with. So after the treatments done and also outpatient and stay at our house, you know, check up, done. One month later, right. after stay 31 days at our place, then the, the father of that girl uh, asking us to, to meet up in after dinner. So, and on that evening, I happened to be just coming back from Seoul, from flying. So yeah, we have uh, dinner nicely and after dinner, we have a conversation. And on the conversation, the man is actually, uh, of course, the family thanking us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting us stay here at your house. Thank you for topping up the medical fee to our you know, children's treatment, this and that. But hey, is it possible for you to help us one more? Oh, yeah. We, one more. Yeah, if I can help you, I, we can be helpful, more than happy to do it. So, yeah, what is it? Uh, well, can you buy us a second hand MP3 car, please? Oh, I'm a salary man. No, I'm not a rich man. Right. Uh, no, uh, well, I'm very rich because God is rich. Anyway, um, he asked us uh, to buy a second-hand car, uh, MPV, because uh, for the time being, they are doing business using motorcycle in the, in the form of carrying uh, uh, handicrafts, locally made handicrafts. Right. And uh, during rain day, rainy days, will be affected, you know, so they want more secure uh, conditions for transportation right. and more uh, month of the merchandise. You know? right. So, mm, I'm quite reluctant to give, to be honest. Right. But my wife pulled me in inside the house, uh, the entire room, then, honey, uh, I think we can do it. You know. So, my wife, okay, let's do it. So we bought a local newspaper, looked for advertisements, and actually the next day we found an eight-year-old car. And, uh, of course, they don't have money, so we brought the car to the garage, fixed it, Make sure the brake lining, brake condition, everything is okay. Right. And then uh, the even we put the time, put new batteries as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, until when things done, and then of course we top up the fuel and give more money for the for them to eat on the way from Jakarta to Surabaya, and Surabaya to Timor by uh, by ship. Of course we give money for the ship, <laughs> everything all the way. <laughs> and, but before they left our house. The wife was uh, asking us, can we have your address, please, complete the address and your name so I can send you a message that when we arrive in there safely, give you uh, no right. notification. Oh, sure. At that time, my wife and I, we just bought an apartment and also processed some uh, uh, land deal. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of copy of her ID. So my wife just simply, oh, take my one of my ID. Okay. Mm -hmm. So three months later, an envelope, A4 size came. And inside the float is a land certificate. And then uh, on my wife's name. Wow, oh, this is false, uh, force, force purchase. So, you know. so we went to, to Timor, we asked for the, the particular price of the land, and we paid for it in full without seeing the land. And what Only and the what year 2000. You, yeah, what did you do with that land then? Nothing. Uh, Okay, but just forgotten. Okay, but somewhere along the line, you said you mo you were running out of space in that house, mm -hmm. and you went to some other type of building. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that other building. You en you ended up building an orphanage, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the year two thousand, yeah, eight years after nineteen ninety two, then we remembered that we bought land right. without seeing it. Then, oh, we bought land. It used to go, so, oh, let's find it. So then we tried to find the land, and uh, it's discouraging the, because the road is very bad. If you want to cycle, you have to step down. Right. And uh, yeah, now that is the orphanage located. Okay. So you started out in a rented house mm -hmm. up to about 40, 48 children. Uh, no, no, rented house, house? Uh, uh, 12 children. 12 children. But then you went to an orf the orphanage that you built, you and your wife Peggy. It went to, what, about 48? But today you have 148 children in yes, there? Okay. Yes. So in 1999, you have this transformative experience. 
And it sounds like some of the values behind that transformative experience was <laughs> your faith, mm -hmm. your belief in giving back, mm -hmm. and writing things that you see as injustices or fairnesses. Did you ever see yourself, though, mm -hmm. having a life purpose that said, I'm going to be the father for 148 children? Did you ever imagine that? To be honest, yeah. no. no. <laughs> I just do what's uh, necessary to be done. And, and um, it's nice to, to be able to be in the giving part, right. the receiving part. And I know for sure that uh, living in poverty is not nice. Right. Because I lived that life before. When in my childhood, my father passed away when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. He was uh, one of the uh, Indonesian uh, university lecturer, and my wife, my uh, um, late father also the founder of one of the university in my hometown. Mm -hmm. When my father passed away right away as a car uh, uh, traffic accident, and I have to. Go through. We went through life, the whole family, where to have one decent meal a day is a luxury already. Right. So, so you had personal experience with that. Yeah, yeah. And and so when you were watching that television mm -hmm. show, seeing people not mm -hmm. having even one meal a day, mm -hmm. you could connect with. Them. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Of course. All right. So you've described to me before we started recording. Uh, here at the leaders room, <laughs> you described to me that it's been a series of one miracle after another. Yes. When you weren't sure how something was going to get from destination A to destination B, a miracle happened. A ship came along, a flight came along. Yeah. When you needed money, a miracle happened mm -hmm. and the money appeared. Mm -hmm. I can't believe though that there's been a succession of one miracle after another mm -hmm. without some type of a gap <laughs> where you find yourself in a dark spot, where you find yourself thinking, how am I going to get out of this? Mm -hmm. Have you been in that spot? And if yes, what was the mental energy you needed to get out of that? Uh, we are created with hardware and software. You know, we, we are blessed with complete uh, things, uh, physically. You know, and then uh, we have our limitations. Yet again, we can do our best. So what we have to do? To just do our best, then your best will end up into something. For example, this happened not too long ago, to, uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. And before that, I have so many other miracles that I can show to you, I can uh, share with you. But this is 2012. Right. On that Sunday, I was invited to conduct a sermon in a church in Singapore. Right. Very happy because uh, the uh, the attendance were youth and uh, you no know, vibrant. Uh, I like young people, you know, mm -hmm. to be positive. Right. You know, and my message was uh, encouragement to do their best mm -hmm. according to the norms, you know, and values that existing. And uh, we're having very good relationship with them. Though uh, after the sermons done. We are fellowshipping, mm -hmm. having meals, talking again with everybody. Right. End up, I arrive at my house, uh, the sermon is at 9, you know, and I arrive at my house at 3 p.m. At 3 p.m., just throw myself on the couch, open my shoes, then my phone rang. And the first call, uh, when I, uh, the, I pick up the call, uh, well, the guy called me, uh, Pastor Budi. Oh, Call me pastor. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, who is it? Oh, this is uh, Pastor Stephanus. Oh, yes. Yes, Pastor, what can I do for you? I heard that you were giving a sermon this morning in, in the church. Yes, I did. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, can you do the same thing at our church? Oh, if I'm in Singapore and have the time, more than happy to do it. When? Today. Excuse me, today. Uh, what time? 5 p.m. And it's three now. <laughs> it's three now. <laughs> On goes the shoes. Yeah. No. Okay. Three. In my head here, this. Why not? Why not? So come out to my mouth. You know. Why not? Sure. <sighs> well, actually, I just. So I, uh, and un you know, un undress myself, put my pajamas, really in pajamas, I throw my bag in the uh, my room, yeah. sleeping, with put icon cold, and I put my alarm thirty minutes later. Yeah. Thirty minutes later, I woke up. 
and ready and arrive timely 5 p.m. I'm there. Okay. On that church, right. the attendance was uh, 18 people, including me, worship leader, and also another person, the pastor, 21 of us. All of them are sick people, very sick people, very, very sick people, and people who are told by the uh, medical uh, uh, experts like the remaining days on their life. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. But so I share about encouragement that hey, this is a transient world. You know, uh, don't worry. Uh, this is not for lasting. Your place is there. You know, encouragement and to just to believe in what you believe in, what the teaching is. You know, has been teaching us, and you know, so I give them comfort in right. terms of right. hope. Okay, and love, and eternal life. Mm -hmm. So, simple. And after the service, the pastor asked me, Tabudi, can you uh, pray especially for this Rachel? Oh, Rachel apparently is a girl whom uh, I think six years old, mm -hmm. very skinny, and she has been uh, uh, treated in Singapore for one year mm -hmm. for uh, three different types of cancer, internal organ. Plus, three days before, she was told that actually she has leukemia as well. So it's complete, right. you know. And he has been treated in Singapore, uh, one of the best uh, hospital. Who am I <laughs> to be uh, given the task to pray for her, someone who has already been treated at the best hospital for one year? Right. And uh, well, I come clean told everybody, hey, who are we? We are no one. The doctor cannot do it for one year already. Uh, so we are not medical experts. Uh, but I show them that, hey, but actually, the life is belongs to him, to God. And God can do everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So we know that the words of nothing is possible, you know, with God, Hey, why don't we make it valid? So, I asked them to pray together with me. Close your eyes right. and then kneel as if you are uh, pray. Close your eyes and uh, pray as you visualizing you're, you are kneeling before God and surrendering everything to Him. Mm -hmm. Just simple. Uh, you know, and complete surrendering. Com surrendering, you know. So, that's what we did, and we, we prayed very short. I like the prayer, maybe about two minutes at the most. Right. No, no need to be very long, you know, two minutes. And then uh, I finished. And after finished, the pastor actually shared with me that actually this girl has been um, treated and about 400 plus, 438, $438,000 has been spent, and from the friends or networks actually, uh, some 400000 already collected and paid, and they're still shortage, uh, having shortage of about 38000 so I'm compelled to help. I'm, you know, kind of, hey, I, I want to help too, but my, uh, you know, uh, limi uh, ability is limited. Mm -hmm. But three months before that day, actually, I have start saving money, 1,000 or 2,000, whatever I have, for us to buy a truck for, to enhance our farming. All right. So I want to help, but I'm not really that. You know, and that rate. No. with that money that you're yeah, saving yeah. for the truck. So I uh, told the pastor, I wrote the check, the amount of money I, s I save for the truck. Pastor, I cannot give much, but maybe this one will help me, even though it's little. So I gave the check to the pastor. And without them, them knowing it, and the children and the father knowing it, but actually they knew it later on after the pastor told them. So that's it. Went home. The next day, which is Monday, 7, p 7 a.m., one of my friends from the first church I shared the word, right. called me, Pabudi, yes, good morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, Pabudi, good morning. Uh, sister Vanessa, uh, there's one gentleman from the church that we, uh, you uh, shared the words yesterday. I want to see you. No? Oh, sure, I'm having off days today, but I'm going to uh, Silvium Square to buy uh, uh, ink for my uh, cartridge, ink for yeah. the printer. Mm -hmm. Oh sure, okay, let's arrange for lunch time. So, 
I told him, I told her, that I'm going to Sim Lim Square, but actually I went, I head up to Funan Center. Oh, Funan Center, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here I am, waited at the Funan Center, thought that Sim Lim Square, yeah. <laughs> and the guy kept calling me, hey, Papuri, where are you? I'm here already at the, uh, the, uh, the entrance. Which entrance? Uh, near the McDonald's. Which McDonald's? Uh, entrance, no McDonald's. Uh, I'm, a, I'm assuming here. Then I realized, hey, oh, I'm in, Fun sorry, I'm in Funan Center. <laughs> so the guy actually made the trip to Funan Center and we met. Never seen the guy before, never heard the name before, you know, have no idea who he was. And, and then we shared conversation, fellowshipping about early child education because he was actually a right. former teacher. We share about farming. Yeah. Because actually, because he is a, a, a fruit uh, business person, mm -hmm. we share about uh, school, about faith, about many things on day-to-day -day living. And then from, from lunch, finger food, drinks, finger food, until we didn't realize that the time is 6.15 in the evening. So six hours, which is the first time we met. Right. And the so outcome of that conversation was? Before. Uh, we parted. Oh, I have to leave. I have to lead uh, a club meeting, a Rotary club meeting. And oh, thank you for reminding me. I have to meeting seven seven p.m. as well. So we parted. But before we left, shook my hand. Papri, I want to give you something. Uh, yes. What is it? Uh, thank you. And thank you anyway. What is it? I want to give you a truck. <laughs> it's never been mentioned a truck, no. Never been mentioned truck. And then I come in. Hey. Have I been talking to someone who is uh, normal? Or normal man? So, eh. Oh yes, oh, thank you, uh, thank you. Truck, huh? truck. Huh? And uh, okay, if I, uh, I don't need a truck in Singapore, you know, and I don't need a truck in Jakarta. If I need a truck, will be in West Timor, the orphanage to enhance our farming. You know? right. Sure, I'll drive a truck to Kupang. Why? Very, very bold, you know, boldly. Uh, okay. And I thought, I, more when is he normal or not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, okay. At the moment, my wife is not at the orphanage. Uh, she brought the children for an outreach enrichment yeah. trip to yeah. Rotary Island, another island, to experience something else. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, she will arrive only in Wednesday evening. You know, the guy said, okay, I will deliver it on Thursday morning. Right. Oh, then really get me confused. We never mentioned about truck, never anything, then suddenly want to give me a truck. And then that's what happened. Yeah. On Thursday morning, a truck delivered to our orphanage. I don't have to pay installment. I don't have to pay anything. Then that's one. Okay. Then this. So I'm sorry. I have, I'm going to have to interrupt though. So what you did is you gave away a truck, mm -hmm. and you got a truck back. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm hearing through all of this, what has kept you th going mm -hmm. through your dark nights, mm -hmm. has been your faith. Yes. And your belief in that. Yes. So, you know, through this period of time, you know, we started in 1999. Mm -hmm. Today is, now we're in the year 2015. Mm -hmm. You've given up your full-time job mm -hmm. at, at associated with airlines, mm -hmm. and you devote all of your time to mm -hmm. the orphanage. Correct? Yes, yes. Okay. And for part of all that you've done for that orphanage, you've been recognized by CNN as one of their heroes, haven't you? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. <laughs> okay, so... Final question I want to ask you is, what's the legacy you hope to leave behind? You know, you've been recognized as a hero. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the legacy that you want to leave behind? <sighs> we are born in this world with equal equality. We cannot live alone. We should share this world together. Because if you go up actually you know, from the outer space then, you will never see the earth with borders. From universe, from the outside, uh, outside world, eh? the, the world is the most precious, the most beautiful planet in the world mm -hmm. with no borders. It's quite sad when people, you know, make us separated and Sadly, different ideology, different 
mm-hmm. you know, uh, we, we segregate ourselves into different, right. you know, we should live together, we should live together harmoniously with respecting each other, right. geographically, culture-wise different, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but, you know, we should work together because if we should, if we're working together, this is a better place. So what you're hoping is to model to other people what you've done at the orphanage and helping other people, you hope that forms an example for other people. Oh, well, it's no example, but uh, it's, uh, it's proven facts that if we are, you know, uh, trying our best, then all the positive things will come back to you okay. and enhance your efforts. Right. So if more and more people with different belief, with different culture, background, with everything, working together, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. All right. Booty? Thank you for joining us today in the Leaders Room.